Hello, good afternoon. This is John Roach. Uh, I have the privilege of presenting today on behalf of the Path Interest Research Group in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, and I've shown here our pictures because most of us have never met any of you. And you may be aware more of Marty Jabers, who is the director of the Bio Biological Psychiatry Analytic Laboratory and is a world-renowned expert in alcohol biomarkers, uh, including PEF, I believe. And then uh, also shown as Don Doherty, who runs a human laboratory, uh, which has conducted all the human use studies that we've done with PEF in our group. Um, now today I'm presenting on the sensitivity and specificity of PEF as a predictor of drinking observed in the past two weeks. And uh, what this study was we, is we had 16 men and 14 women who were at least 21 years old, who were paid as research volunteers to drink as usual and come in once per week over a four week observation period uh, where they uh, delivered a blood for PETH analyses. Um, we also then had them go on online for a daily self-report. So each day they had to log in and report yesterday's drinking. And, uh, and we calculated standard drink size. Uh, in the US, that's uh, approximately 14 grams of alcohol, ethanol. And we defined heavy drinking using uh, some original conventions in the US for the definition of heavy which was four or more drinks for women, five or more drinks for men in any particular day. And we report here the frequency of how often they drink, how often they drink heavily, drinks per drinking day, drinks per day, and we had repeated PETH measurements. And the first thing you see is we had very stable patterns of drinking over time, week to week to week. Uh, next, you see that there is a sex effect, and the effect is on drinking, where men drink more drinks per day, more drinks per drinking day than did women, and consequently, their PETH values are higher. Um, however, that, that does not translate into a sex effect on the relationship between drinking and PETH, as shown here. We, we, we have each week, we have correlations between the drinking to observe during that week and the path measurement at the end of that week. And we regularly see that week to week. And then here in panel B, it's combined for at week four, combining the males and females. And, and what you see is, you know, there, there's, a, there's a good predictive correlation between drinking and path, but, um, and we show various cutoffs here. But there's no effect of sex. Um, the males are tending to have more because they tend to drink more, but uh, there's no effect of sex on the relationship between drinking and PETH. Um, and here we show a series of seven different regression models where we're predicting the PETH observation at the end of the four weeks of monitored observed drinking. Uh, predicted by the preceding week or two weeks or three weeks of drinking. And in model one, it's just the one week of bivariate correlation. In model two, we add in sex and there's no significant effect of sex as a predictor of the relationship between drinking and path value. Um, when we go to two weeks of drinking, so here week four path is predicted by the preceding two weeks, weeks four and three, and both of those are significant predictors. And then in model four, we go to three weeks, including now uh, three weeks ago, which was week two. And what you see here is that three weeks ago value is not significantly adding to the predictive power. And so, because these are nested models, we can compare between the two models and we conclude that model three is the best model, the most parsimonious. Two weeks of drinking is the strongest predictor and adding a third week or shortening it to only one week is not as good. 
So two weeks of drinking is optimal. <clears throat> we also considered models five, six, and seven uh, repeated PETH measurement. So if this would be like you take a blood sample and then you repeat that blood sample one, two, or three weeks later. And so the preceding PETH measurement is the strongest predictor of the observed PETH value in week four. Um, but drinking is still a significant additive predictor yeah, because here, uh, just a one week of drinking, two weeks of drinking are still significant predictors. You add in three weeks of drinking and that third week uh, diminishes its impact and the model is not significantly improved. So again, the optimal model here is two weeks of drinking. And of course, if you have a previous PETH observation, that's a very strong predictor of future PETH observation. Um, we tried to refine that a little bit on the days of drinking by looking at one, three, seven, 10, 14, or 17 days. And, and what you see here is three or seven days uh, predict some, uh, 10 days, 14 days are better, uh, 17 days is good as well. But, but the point is the most parsimonious optimal model is 10 days of drinking. That's where the R square really uh, most parsimoniously hit a high point. And going to 14 days is not a significant prove improvement over 10 days of observation. So it could be that 10 days is the optimal period. Uh, but given the fact uh, the commonality of using weeks, weeks of drinking, we'd say two weeks is better than one week though it may not be better than 10 days. And of course, you're familiar with uh, a publication by Ewelling and Smith um, in 2018, where they suggested PETH cutoffs. Uh, the 20 nanogram per mil cutoff being defined by them as a significant level of consumption, a moderate, at least moderate level of drinking. Uh, and uh, the 20 nanogram per mil is, is, is widely used in most laboratories around the world as the predictor of, of, of importance, forensically significant levels of drinking. And um, now they also suggested a 200 nanogram per mil cutoff as a designation of heavy drinking. And um, and these, he these, these moderate and heavy drinking are related to various worldwide authorities, NIAAA, WHO, et cetera. But in our sensitivity and specificity analysis, we look at the 20 nanogram per mil cutoff and, and see that um, it w didn't ha did not have, it had good sensitivity, but not, not, not good specificity uh, as a predictor of drinking. Uh, certainly for the frequency of any drinking, the parameters aren't good. Uh, for the frequency of heavy drinking, good sensitivity, but not good specificity using 20 as a cutoff. Now, if we go to 200, of course, the specificity is improved, but the sensitivity is poor and, and not, not adequate. Um, and so some cutoff between those two. Um, and, and of course, in, in our observed sample, in the empirical cutoff, we, we optimize the cutoff in the observed study sample that would optimize the sensitivity and specificity. And we got cutoffs in the, in the neighborhood of 30 nanograms per mil, generally. And um, there we get decent sensitivity and high specificity for detecting heavy drinking. Now in this study, none of these cutoffs are very good for detecting any drinking. And, and perhaps that's because of the way we collected the data. These were st subjects who were recruited in the study because they, they drank regularly at least once a week. And, and so there's, there's, near, there's always at least one day a week. We couldn't even measure these parameters for detection of any drinking, but when we detected 
we got some detection of three or more days of drinking, but still not that great. In the study that we observed, uh, heavy drinking was what we were most able to predict. We also tried to look at what has become an NIAAA recommendation for safe dr drinking levels. Females can drink one, males can drink two, but if females drink more than one or males drink more than two, that's at risk. Risky drinking defined by NIAAA. And um, so here, again, we don't have good sensitivity specificity parameters to detect this quote, risky drinking. Um, what we really found is heavy drinking. And here's our ROC curves uh, for predicting uh, one or more days of heavy drinking in the past two weeks, in the past one week. Two weeks is a stronger predictor than one, but in either case, we have good ROC characteristics, uh, high area under the curve, uh, a predictive power for detection of heavy drinking. And that is really our conclusion, that these, these PETH cutoffs best predict heavy drinking and that 30 nanograms per ml would be a better cutoff than 20. Thank you very much for your attention.